I am. I'm in a very sunny LA. <laughs> yeah, I can actually respond to that by saying I'm in a very sunny London, which I can't usually say, to be honest. But it's actually. It's quite... I hear that the weather's glorious. Yeah, it's not. I mean, the fact that I'm not, I'm not even got a light on. This is the natural light. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous now because I don't come home till the end of the month, and I keep seeing everyone like out in London, and I'm like, oh, I want to come home now. <laughs> so do, do you live out there, Nelly? No, no, I was just out here for a couple of months. I oh. managed to kind of escape for a couple of months and and get some sun. But yeah, I'll be back end of June. Oh, nice. Well, it could be worse. Yeah. There's worse places to be. Than no, <laughs> aren't there? Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna. I can begin uh, by saying how much I enjoyed the movie. I am. Um, Have you seen it? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen the whole thing. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah, I'm so jealous. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. You should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun making it. That's yeah. for sure. No, I had a lovely tone to it, and I think it's just uh, it just yeah, just what the doctor ordered when I watched it. it was just one of those movies where I just I was in I was completely in the mood for that sort of film, so it hit me at the right time. I, uh, and I think like post pandemic I think it's a good time for a film like this like you said I think it's got a lot of heart and a lot of kind of warmth and that kind of that, that us Brits do very well um so I hope people like it yeah but I mean it's a great role isn't it I mean you must have been so thrilled when this one came your way did you I guess when you just got that screenplay and read it you just thought yes this is this is one I got to do oh I yeah we it was it was such a whirlwind because I, I I had the audition um and I think we started feel like not that many days after that, but yeah, it came in and I was like, because with acting, sometimes you get you get sent castings and sometimes you're like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to do this. And I just I saw her die, who is, I mean, die's a horror. <laughs> die is a horror. I kind of I see her as kind of the villain of our film. Um, but yeah, like so fun to play because she's just so awful you know um um yeah I I literally read the script and thought I I think I know exactly how I want to to play die and luckily yeah thank thank god um I got the part yeah because I was going to say because I interviewed Katie last week and she was just a real gem it must make your life so much easier when working with such nice people because that goes a long way doesn't it I think we sort of forget sometimes how much value you can put on just working with a kind of nice collective and she just struck me that was so easy to help with yeah she Katie's amazing and we actually because we we were it we were on the car we all stayed on the caravan park so we basically just um yeah like met and then went and, and lived together basically and she's great and the whole crew like we were so lucky we had so much fun in sun in in not so sunny real when we were there <laughs> it was like torrential rain um freezing but um yeah like just the best crew like so much fun like too much fun you know and you're like oh this is this this doesn't really work can we class this as a work but um yeah brilliant and it's it it makes such a difference and I think we all gelled really quickly um cast and crew and yeah no the, it was it was just such a fun crew and we had quite a lot to I think we were in real were we there for two or three weeks and we had quite a lot to kind of cram in we had the whole film to kind of cram in and we had days where the weather was awful you know it was very obviously shooting on location it's kind of you're you're at the whim of things like the weather um but yeah everyone was just just great just had great fun and Katie Katie is superb like Janet is just like everyone will fall in love with Janet and this is why die is such a horror because you just think how can someone be like this with someone as angelic and lovely and Katie just I think she absolutely storms it. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned obviously that, you know, Die is a bit of a horror <laughs> to say the least, but there is something still quite lovable about the character. So did, did you did you like, could you find those things about her that you liked? Because I guess in order to play her, maybe you kind of have to find some empathy with the character. But I, I yeah, even though I could, I could see that she was a horror, I still kind of liked her in some ways. Was that the case for you too? Yeah, we had like, we had a couple of kind of, we had to do a bit of script changing on a few things because I was getting to the point where I was like, I mean, she's so awful. <laughs> and like you say, you have to kind of find something. You have to be kind of empathetic, I think, to the character. And I kind of, I mean, I've met some dies in my time. Um, 
but you just kind of I I had I had my own kind of backstory for Di going on in my own head and just I think those people like I think Di is is very insecure I think all of the kind of the nastiness and the attention seeking I think understanding that that comes from somewhere that's a very unhappy place in her um and like I said you know I've met dyes in my time and they don't they they just have no kind of self-awareness and I think she's she's a product of her surroundings I think I think Di doesn't know any other way to be than to you know try and be center of attention and use her kind of um I was going to say sexiness, but she's not really that sexy. <laughs> but, you know, she's kind of, she's used to getting, she, she's only used to behaving a certain way and that's worked for her up until, up, up to a point. Um, so yeah, I, I did find, I, I found a bit of warmth in Di and I think I kind of, I, I really just enjoyed the humour of her because, yeah, she she is a nightmare but there are some like the um the i won't give anything away but like the beauty pageant thing where she's she kind of loses her rag was just so much fun it was so fun getting to do that yeah they always say that playing villains is is the most fun not that she's a villain that's a bit that's a bit of a strong word but the antagonist of the piece i guess is yeah yeah oh god yeah absolutely i i it was you can have so much fun with them and you just get to you know she, I mean, she's she. Some of the things that she says and does are so outrageous. But yeah, an absolute, absolute dream to play. Yeah, maybe I was in like an overly philosophical mood when I watched it or something. But I, I thought there was a bit of a sadness to this film as well. And even like Di, she kind of represented the passing of time because I'm 32, so I've got to that age now where like I'm constantly suddenly my youth is starting to feel further and further away, and I'm getting into kind of adulthood and stuff like that. And Di, in some ways was reflecting that wasn't it she's not the kind of old whippersnapper maybe she used to be so it's, it's actually even as a comedy there is something a little bit moving about this film too yeah I think she kind of epitomizes that thing of someone not wanting to let go of their their youth a bit and I think we can all kind of you know I'm sure we've all had times I mean even in, in the pandemic um I was I was with my parents for a bit and I was like oh my god like I'm acting like a teenager and this is quite nice this is quite fun but yeah that thing of um she almost when I first read Di and I was like she's almost got a bit of arrested development she's a bit kind of it's like grow up Di you know and I think throughout the film things happen and she kind of has to kind of wake up to the reality that she's not as young as she used to be you know she's getting a bit squishy around the edges she needs to kind of have you know the next phase of her life and I just think she doesn't know how to do that necessarily um and the dynamic with her and Janet's character it is it's it's kind of so immature and you know my my best friend that I kind of bullied at school um you know that's how she treats her. Not that I, not that I didn't believe my best friend at school, but like she kind of treats her like that, that friend that kind of gets a bit hen, like Janet's almost like a henpecked husband um, to die really. Um, and, it, and it really, I think for die having to let go of Janet is huge. It's this thing of like, I don't want anyone else to have her. You know, she's always been she's always been there for me, even if she even if she's kind of kicks her a bit or whatever. But um, yeah, I think there is something there's some, there's there's a definite sadness to die for sure. Yeah, and I was going to say we've all met a few dies in our time. <laughs> we have. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but you mentioned the beauty pageant scene. That's probably my favourite scene in it. And it reminds me, because I used to go to Pontins when I was a kid um, on yeah. with my family. And I think a lot of the movie, even though the characters aren't kids, they're still it's sort of quite nostalgic and reminiscent of some of my childhood holidays. Did it remind you of any of your kind of holidays that you went on when you were a kid? Yeah, I mean, we just used to, we used to go to Cornwall because um, we had family down there. So I never did like a Pontins or um, a Butlins or anything. But it, and I think even that there's something about, I mean, I don't know, I don't, I, are they kind of dying out? But there is something kind of so old fashioned about that. And I think that added to, there's something a bit sad about that, isn't there, really? This thing of like, we've all, you know, we're all here, we're all here to have forced fun <laughs> in our caravans. I mean, it, it was amazing fun. I've never done a caravan holiday and that was, I, I would do it again. Um, 
but yeah and I think there's something just so quintessentially British about that kind of holiday I mean I'm sure other countries and other people have, have similar and but there's yeah it, it's so it's such a kind of I guess it's almost like a little bit of a, a nostalgic love letter to that kind of old-fashioned British um traditional kind of holiday yeah and it, and it reminds me because when I've been on those holidays I've because a, a bit like in the film I then I entered into a talent show once and I sung Fong Song. I just did Fong Song by Cisco <laughs> in front of a load of old biddies <laughs> wow did you win uh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> you can't even get booed off. But, um, I just wondered if you were to enter into a talent show, what would your act be? If you ever do, or, or if you did a karaoke, what would be your your go to song? Oh, I love karaoke. I love karaoke. I do. I absolutely adore karaoke. I have a couple of songs. I um, Valerie by Amy Winehouse. Mm. I love a bit of Valerie by Amy Winehouse. If I'm drunk enough, is a tune. <laughs> But I was, I was going to ask too, because I, I mean, obviously, um, I was looking at your kind of uh, IMDb, because that's obviously how I do all of my research. And it looks like your acting's really kind of picked up of late. Is this, is this where you see your future? Are you hoping to do more and more kind of movies and TV shows going forward? Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. And I kind of um, not really fell into it. I mean, I always, I, I loved drama at school and I didn't really do anything past college and then and then fell into modelling and, was really lucky that that kind of led on to having the opportunities to do some acting and I yeah I love it I mean I I adore it and I feel like yeah I I, I would absolutely love to do more and hopefully that's kind of in the pipeline um, with Covid obviously it kind of felt like really bad timing but you know I think everyone um we can all kind of look back on last year and think, oh, that was a shame. But we, cause we shot this like pre pandemic, this was 2019 when we did this, um, which kind of feels like ages ago, but also last year kind of feels like it didn't happen because we didn't do anything. Um, but yeah, no, I would love to, um, that's kind of where, where I wanna, wanna go now. Do you think in some regards you kind of have to work doubly hard to prove people wrong in a sense that I've, I've interviewed kind of um, actors and actresses before who have come from a modeling career and it is the industry has a habit of pigeonholing people and do you think it's something is it something you've encountered you almost feel like you're underestimated to a degree yeah I think I, I, I think so and I think people you know understandably kind of think well who are you to suddenly you know try and be an actress when you you're just a model but I think you know um it's kind of, I guess it's a double-edged sword. I would probably have never got the opportunity and had the path towards where, you know, I am now if I wasn't a model. So I can't kind of bemoan it too much. And I kind of get it. I kind of get why people are like, oh, okay, let's see what you can do. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully I do an all right job, but you're always, you know, you're always going to get criticism. And I think, um, you know, I just, I, I love doing it. I really, I really enjoy it. And, and if I'm offered acting roles, then great. Mm. We just need to get people to watch me, myself and die. That'll get you more. We it's, do. It's, we a, do. it's a great performance. Um, oh, thank you. So what, what have you got coming up? Because I know obviously, like you mentioned that COVID had a bit of, did create a bit of a vacuum of a year where like nothing happened. So things were paused and shelved. I just wondered if, um, yeah, if you had any kind of projects in the pipeline that you're looking forward to. Yeah, just a, a few things that kind of aren't confirmed yet, but just kind of looking forward to getting back to to um, to work and just doing like castings and yeah, just finding the right the right thing. I think it feels like now everything's slowly getting back. Everything's kind of you know, I I come back to London at the end of this month, and I kind of feel like I'm optimistic that I'll um, hopefully kind of hit the ground running. Yeah, well, I had my vaccination today, my first one, so we're getting there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feeling. Yeah, but I've got a bit of a dead arm, but um, you know, it's, it's yeah. I had I had both I had both Pfizer's in in America, so I'm I'm vaccinated. I'm all I'm ready to rock. <laughs> 
Well, my, my final question for today, I was just wondering, because you mentioned you haven't seen me, myself and I yet. Have you got plans to watch it? Because usually, traditionally, they'd be casting through screenings at some hotel in Soho or something. But I guess we're kind of without there. So I just wondered if you had a kind of a Zoom thing planned or anything. Well, no, I'm, I'm gutted because there's a screening in Bolton um, in about, in just over a week. And I'm not back yet. So I don't get back till after that screening. But I think we're going to have um, a London screening there so hopefully it will be after the 26th of June <laughs> and I'll be because I'd love to watch it with everyone yeah because I was just going to say before I do go have you got used to seeing yourself on screen yet I mean because it's just one of those things where I guess I can't even even watching my interviews back I always sort of like can't even bear to see my own face but just as an as an actress having been in kind of movies and kind of starting to be in more and more stuff seeing yourself on the big screen has that got normal yet I kind of don't do it <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to think if I've watched anything. It's really uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. And who was it? There was, I was talking to, oh God, who was it? I was talking to an actress who was basically saying that she watches herself because she's like, how can you expect other people to watch you if you can't sit through watching yourself? But I was like, there's something, when you watch yourself, I just think you can't be objective and it's really uncomfortable and, and and especially with acting um just constantly watching and thinking I could have done that better oh I should have I should have done that like that it, you you just I think the, the constant kind of internal critic um it's uncomfortable <laughs> But I want everyone else to go and watch it. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Depp doesn't watch his own thing, so you're in good company. Not. There no. we go. Lots of there people. we go. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today, Lucy. It's been a real pleasure speaking thank to you. So fun. It's been so nice talking yeah. to you. Best of luck with the release. I honestly, I think it's a real little gem. This movie. I hope lots of people oh, can see it. No. I hope so. Yeah, I think I think it's great. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!